Hello and welcome to How I Would Have Made It, a new show where I take bad episodes or bad TV shows and rewrite them to make them good. Still working on the tagline, but let's hope that sticks. Anyways, first target of the series is the Brothers Grunt. Oh boy, I, I pounded this one into the ground. First I said I hated it, then I said I hated the first season and hated it, and then liked the second. And then I said the whole show is just kind of... Well, yeah, that's kind of it. So, the show was about these creatures called grunts that are pale, white, rubbery people with veins all over their bodies and wear nothing but underwear. They live in a society, and then there's this one guy named Perry who is chosen to be the new leader, philosopher, it's not explained, and then for some unexplained reason he leaves and joins the humans in their society. So then the big leader, the Gruntus Poobah, sends Perry's five brothers, Frank, Tony, Bing, Dean, and Sammy, out into the human world to find him because... something? And, well, it starts off with them trying to find Perry and everything, but by the second season, they kind of just drop this angle and just wait f for, I don't know, maybe a future season or something to focus on that, because what the show became was just the grunts messing around in the human world, and they completely ignored the whole Perry angle. I think Perry may have showed up like once or twice. It was just a mess. And, well, there's a lot that could have been done with it. For example, make it less confusing. That was one of the problems that got the show, well, a lot of detractors, let's just say. A lot of people were not happy with the show when it came out. No matter how much they tried to promote it, did not resonate with them because it, this whole thing makes no sense. Now, granted, the show is focused on surrealism and gross out. I'll get back to that in the next point. But, there's a difference between surreal and making no sense. This in this version is surreal, but it still makes sense. You still know what the grunts stand for, you still know why Perry leaves, you still know all this stuff. Now the next point, make it more of a variety. All of the show, season 1 and 2, was just gross out and surrealism with the occasional slapstick. In this there will be dialogue humor, as well as slapstick, even though it's not animated, it's audio only, with a touch of gross out here and there. Not the greatest of gross out, but we'll see where it gets us. Another thing to make it less confusing is, this is a small one, is when the grunts talk, because they don't really talk, they just make noises like and stuff like that. You don't know what they're saying. Now that's okay, that's actually a really good idea for storytelling. But the problem is, because all their faces just go like this all the time, you can't tell how they feel about stuff. So you don't get any emotion out of this, and really, all the dialogue that comes out of them is just background noise. So when they do talk, make subtitles so you know what they're saying, for the important stuff at least. Because there still will be the background noise and stuff, but at least make it more of a flowing narrative. That's another thing. Make more of a story. Because... Well, even though this is just going to be one episode, it's a one episode thing, you gotta make it set up. The original pilot, which is the episode that's being remade here, the ceremony, was way too rushed. It should have taken up the full 22 minutes or however long the Brothers Grunt segments took up. Instead, it was only like 5 minutes. This is about 11 minutes, but it does its job to set up what's to be expected, like well, why Perry's leaving? Got to set up the adventure, got to set up the personalities, and that's the last thing. Give them personalities in the entire show. Frank, Tony, Bing, Dean, Sammy, aside from their noises and physical appearance, they were indistinguishable from each other. They had no personalities whatsoever. They had like a small trait, like Frank had a little bit more of a tendency to get mad, or Dean was slightly dumber than his brothers. In this, they're actually given personalities. Frank is the no-nonsense, tough guy, jerk person who gets really angry quickly. Tony is the self-entitled, all of that kind of guy, but he has really bad luck, so he's kind of like Squidward in the old days. Bing is the blithering idiot, big, strong, muscle guy. Dean is the hyper-energetic, crazy guy 
who gets distracted easily, and Sammy is the weirdo, who is, doesn't really know about boundaries or etiquette or anything like that. Grunus Poobah remains pretty much the same. Perry is given a little bit more motive as to what he does, but as this is one episode, his character really won't be developed. So, I hope you enjoy how I would have made the Brothers Grunt. Open to the Gruntus Poobah in front of a crowd of hooded grunts. Welcome, brothers! Thank you for coming! I am pleased to announce that our Brotherhood has some new members ready to achieve full Brotherhood status of our amazing organization. We have had a lot of work go into this, and we hope it pays off. And here they are now! Oh, boys! Come in! Dean and Tony enter. Dean shoots his arms up in excitement and excitingly punches Tony, knocking him to the ground. What? 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 Bing and Perry enter, walking on Tony. Frank and Sammy enter. Sammy walks on Tony, but Frank picks him up and violently shakes him. <laughs> Perry puts his arm around Frank and leads Frank to the Gruntus Puba. Sammy does the same with Bing, but creepily rubs his arm while doing it. These six have spent their past 18 years preparing for this triumphant moment. Now, with their studies and meditations complete, they are ready. So what do you say, folks? Are they in? The grunts cheer in approval. Oh, this is such a wonderful day. I can still remember the day of their hatching. Fade to 18 years ago where the Gruntus Pruba has a full head of hair. He enters a chamber and approaches the Gruntus Primus Maximus. Oh, greetings, giant creature of magnificent beauty, known as the Gruntus Primus Maximus, I might say. <laughs> have you have any new hatchlings for us today? Oh wait, I forgot, you can't talk. Well, I best go check myself. And the Gruntus Pruba walks down the stairs and approaches a trough and sees several baby grunts. <gasps> Fifth Kevin above! Could it be? Oh, it's impossible! But could it be? Gruntus Pruba runs to the trough and sees Bing, Frank, Dean, Tony, Perry, and Sammy as babies. I couldn't believe my eyes, and I wouldn't have if I didn't see it for myself. I couldn't understand. The Gruntus Primus Maximus had acquired six that day. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Fade back to the present day. And they stand before you now. Ready to achieve full brotherhood status and protection from our enemies, the humans! A picture of a human shows up on a projector. <gasps> <laughs> Dean buries his hand in the ground in fear like an ostrich. <laughs> Another picture of a human shows up. This one is fat, hairy, and sunburnt, wearing a Hawaiian shirt. These creatures are fierce and deadly, my brothers. Their stomachs are so, are so large, they can hold so many of our kind, digesting them, turning them into mere nutrients. They wear fancy clothes to lure in our kind, so they can trap them and eat them with assorted condiments like this cat sup, which is presumably made from stray cats. Oh, how barbaric they are! Oh, it's so horrible! And this large fur on the male's arms protects them from attack. Their blubber can also shield them from the harsh winters. And worst of all, picture shows a family watching TV. They're the ones responsible for the sin of reality television! <laughs> The 
They are dangerous and vile, which is why we all must remain here in this mountain for our safety. And now you six are free to join us. But first, you must be cleansed. <coughs> Grunt disapproval approaches the six. He pulls out the assorted items he needs for the ceremony. He puts lotion on his hand, but doesn't rub it in. I anoint thee with the salve of Royd. It shall protect you from the sins of the flesh, and it smells like lavender. Gruntus Poobah slaps all of them in the face, leaving behind the lotion, which they rub in. <coughs> Dean starts rubbing it in, then puts some on his finger and licks it. <coughs> Sammy starts rubbing Tony's face. Gruntus Pupa holds up a bottle that reads salt water. And I splash thee with the water of Brutus. It shall keep you from encountering any sort of social faux pas. Gruntus Pupa splashes the water in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this Pruba pulls out a roll of mints and puts them on their tongues. And the tablet of Retzin. It will keep your breath fresh and minty, even after eating. Dean tries to eat the mint, but can't bite through it, and one of his teeth falls out. <laughs> Suck. Don't chew. <clears throat> Double entendre side. It's time for the placing of the down. A hooded grunt arrives and gives the duck to the Gruntus Pruba. He holds it up to Sammy and it pecks him on the head. <laughs> he holds it up and puts it up to Frank and it pecks him on the head. <laughs> he picks it up, holds it up to Bing and it pecks him on the head. <laughs> he holds it up to Tony and it pecks him on the head. Holds it up and is about to go over to Perry, but it gets scared, starts quacking a lot, and flies away. The ground begins to shake and the lights start to flicker. <laughs> no, Frank! It's not the end of the world! That's next Tuesday. But no, it is the Chosen One! All the grunts murmur in amazement. <gasps> I can't believe it. Oh man, how many times have I said that today? Anyways, looks like you're the chosen one, Perry. <laughs> the hooded grunts put a crown and cape on Perry as his brothers applaud. You shall take over as the new Poobah soon. Providing we are not dead by the apocalypse, and the fate of the monastery rests entirely on your shoulders. Perry's smile fades. Every decision you make could change everyone's lives for the better or for the worse. Perry begins to look scared. It's a restless, thankless job, but yet an important one. But enough of this. Perry tries to run away, but two grunts put him on a golden toilet. <laughs> Let us celebrate! Cut to later, the grunts are partying, eating cheese and looking at a freak show which is comprised of human mannequins. Pay to the... Pay to the brothers lining up and high-fiving Perry's foot. Cut to Dean looking at his reflection in the toilet. Black nut, black nut, black nut. Sammy starts rubbing Perry's shoulders. <laughs> Perry runs out of the room. Perry's escaping! Everyone, find the chosen one and hurry! 
Cut to Frank looking through several doors. <laughs> Cut to Sammy in the library. Sammy is looking around. He approaches what looks like a map and slowly starts rubbing his finger on it. Pan out to show that the map is actually Bing's back. <laughs> Bing opens a book. <laughs> Bing opens another book. <laughs> Cut to Tony crawling through the vents. Uh, uh. He gets stuck. <laughs> Cut to Dean walking through the hall. He looks at the ground. <gasps> Dean picks up a piece of string and starts playing with it. <laughs> Cut to Perry outside. He throws his cap and cape off a cliff. <laughs> Perry looks at a sign reading this city down the hill. He runs down to the sign, looks out at the city, and runs towards it. Pan over to the Gruntus Pooba who sees us through the window. <gasps> Egad! He turns around to the other five. Dean is still playing with the piece of string. Your brother Perry has departed from the monastery. I'm afraid we have no other choice but to send you five, his closest brothers, to go out and find him. It may be very dangerous, but- Dean? Dean! Are you listening? Sammy pinches Dean's ear. <laughs> you will search everywhere, every little nook and cranny of the human world, and you must prevail, for without the guidance of the Chosen One, the Brotherhood will fold! You must go! Now! Hurry! Fade to outside. <laughs> Frank puts his arm out. Sammy puts his hand on top of Frank's. Dean puts his hand on Sammy's. Bing puts his hand on Dean's. Tony puts his hand on Bing's. They run down to the city, each going their separate ways. Well, folks, that was the show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or requests for future How I Would Have Made It, feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.